Insider trading on 9-11 A put option is a bet that a stock price is going to fall. If one were to put a single put option contract on American Airlines at $30 a share and the stock fell to $18, one could purchase 100 shares at $18 and immediately sell them for $30, netting a profit of $12 a share. This is exactly what happened on a far larger scale with many companies around the world on 9-11. The levels of options purchased the week of 9-11 were more than six times higher than normal. A former member of the German parliament, then responsible for oversight of the German secret service, estimated that profits by insider traders were $15 billion. C CBS News reported that, quote, at least seven countries are dissecting suspicious trades that may have netted more than $100 million in profits, unquote. A much more conservative figure. In one clear example among many reported by CBS and AP, quote, the trades involved at least half a million shares of American Airlines, but what raised the red flag is more than 80 percent of the orders were puts, far outnumbering the call options, those betting the stock would rise. The source says they have never seen that kind of imbalance before. Normally the numbers are fairly even, an extremely unbalanced number of trades betting United stocks would fall also transformed into huge profits when it did fall after the hijackings and attacks. Shortly after 9-11, the Security and Exchange Commission issued a list of 38 companies whose shares had been suspiciously traded. All the firms had seen unusual levels of put options purchases right before 9-11 and almost every company's shares had fallen sharply right after the attacks. The Herzliya Institute for Counterterrorism documented enormous suspicious trades in a story entitled Black Tuesday, the world's largest insider trading scam. Question mark. Convair, a German firm hired to retrieve the computer hard drives from the rubble of the World Trade Center found that there was a deluge of electronic trading just minutes before the first plane struck. Richard Wagner, a data retrieval es expert, estimated that more than $100 million in illegal transactions appeared to have rushed through the World Trade Center computers before and during the disaster. The Wall Street Journal reported that there was an unusually high volume and the purchase of five-year treasury notes just before the attacks, including one $5 billion trade. T-bills are used as a safe haven for investors when the markets are in trouble, and T-bill prices rose immediately after the attacks. Deutsche Bank, Alex Brown, is the American investment banking arm of the German giant Deutsche Bank and was used to purchase some of these options. One of the anonymous trades has left a $2.5 million prize unclaimed. The firm used to place the put options on United Airlines stock was managed until 1998 by the man who is now the number three executive director position at the CIA. A.B. Buzzy Krongard became vice chairman of Bankers Trust when the two firms merged and his new position was to oversee private client relationships. Krongard had a special hands-on relationship with some of the wealthiest people in the world in a specialized banking operation that Senator Carl Levin identified as being connected to the laundering of drug money. Bankers Trust was acquired by Deutsche Bank in 1999 to form the single largest bank in Europe. Before 9-11, Kevin Ingram an executor for Bankers Trust Deutsche Bank pled guilty to laundering money to finance terrorist operations for groups linked to Osama bin Laden. Deutsche Bank has been a favorite of the bin Laden family and was connected to the hijackers and their support network. Deutsche Bank had corresponding relationships with banks in Bahrain and Kuwait that served George W. Bush when he engaged in illegal insider trading of shares of his company Harkin Energy. Both banks, 
Kuwait Finance House and Faisal Islamic Bank of Bahrain had dealt with al-Qaeda and bin Laden. But when the Bush administration released its worldwide list of suspect financial institutions vowing to track down terrorist financing, neither bank was on the list. Mayo Shattuck III is a powerful force in the financial world, head of the Alex Brown Deutsche Bank on 9-11. He had previously been involved in Enron, helping them conceal their massive debt as well as involved in an insider trading scam involving Adnan Khashoggi's Genesis Intermedia immediately before 9-11. He was midway through a three-year, $30 million contract as head of Alex Brown when the attacks came, and under his management, some of the illegal trades on Amer United Airlines were placed. Mayo Shattuck has taken over Alex Brown operations in 1997 after Krongard had officially gone to the CIA in 1998. Mayo Shattuck III resigned on the day after 9-11. A close associate of Council of Foreign Relations member Stephen Bechtel of the Bechtel Corporation. Shattuck is now the CEO of Constellation Energy Group one of the firms that participated in Vice President Dick Cheney's Energy Task Force. Alex Brown refinanced the Carlyle Group when it purchased United Defense Technologies in 2000. Their relationship with the Bush family business, Carlyle, goes back seven decades to George W. Bush's grandfather, Prescott Bush, and Brown Brothers Harriman. Nine agencies SEC, New York Stock Exchange, Congressional Budget Office, Department of Justice, FBI, Secret Service, CIA, Treasury, and NSA opened investigations into intersider trading immediately after 9-11 based on obvious evidence that they initially admitted. Not one of these agencies has to this day divulged any information to the public. The logic of insider trading on 9-11 was made clear by the Pentagon when it announced plans for a futures market on terrorist attacks called the Policy Analysis, Mar Analysis Market. The official program is predicated on the admission that people with advanced knowledge of terrorist attacks would always seek to capitalize on that knowledge. Public outrage over the program forced the resignation of convicted Iran-Contra felon John Poindexter.